Mitch Claydon grabbed his best bowling figures for Kent as they had the better of the opening day of their latest LV County Championship match with Leicestershire at Grace Road. That was until some wickets late in the day restored parity. Fit again Rob Key won the toss and inserted on a green pitch only for the inform Angus Robson and Greg Smith to get off to a flying start. Both hit plenty of early boundaries against the Kent side missing Doug Bollinger. The first 10 overs of this contest cost the visitors 46 runs, with Robson, who after scoring seven championship half centuries this season, finally hit a maiden first class ton against the Indian tourists last week. Smith was well taken behind by Sam Billings at the start of Claydon's sixth over of the morning, the batsman falling for 16. Claydon then struck again in his next over, Billings again busy behind the stumps with another smart catch to remove Ned Eckersley for five at 52 for two. Robson is really making a name for himself and a struggling team this year. As well as that 100 against the tourists, he came into this match on the back of a couple of quality 50s in the loss to Surrey at the Kia Oval. While his older brother has been making the headlines for England, the only thing missing from Angus's game is a century in this competition. He was heading towards yet another 50 here. He was doing the majority of the scoring, making 46 out of a total of 82, when Dan Redfern clipped a legside ball from Darren Stevens into the hands of Daniel Bell Drummond to go for nine. Robson struck his tenth boundary of another good session for the batsman to get to half century number eight in the LV County Championship this year. He'd never hit one before. He'd needed only 58 balls for his latest one, Kent becoming the latest side to discover the talents of the 22-year-old. Alas for him, he was out before the lunch break. First though, Josh Cobb gave Claydon his third wicket by nicking to Stevens in the slips after making nine. Claydon then banged one into Robson who gloved a pull before marching off with 56 runs to his name, made out of a total of 110 for five. Shortly after lunch, Claydon found some late movement to have Niall O'Brien LBW for 27 and that gave the former Durham man his second Fifer for Kent and the fourth of his career. Leicestershire were in a bit of a hole now and it got bigger when Adam Riley tossed one up to bowl Ben Rain for 8 to leave the home side on 152 for 7. Riley has come from nowhere this year to be talked of as the next spinner to play for England. Andrew Strauss said as much in an interview on Sunday. Riley was never going to get any help from a fresh green pitch on day one of a match and Rob Taylor and Jigger Nake tried to make the most of that. They produced a crucial partnership for their team which brought them 54 runs in 13 overs to at least earn Leicestershire a batting bonus point. Adam Ball was the fifth bowler employed by Key and he broke the stand by Yorking Taylor for 37 with a total on 206. Then next ball, Charlie Hartley, a 20-year-old making his first-class debut, earned his maiden wicket in his ninth over when Nake edged a drive off him behind. Nake was on his way for 25 and Hartley then grabbed his second wicket by having Nathan Buck well held by Riley in the slips. Leicestershire were all out after 55 overs for 217, with Claydon ending with his best figures for Kent of 5 for 77. The visitors had seven overs to survive until tea and neither Key nor Bell Drummond had too many problems against the new ball which was used by Buck and Charlie Shrek who would have been keen to do well against the count he left after a couple of seasons at the end of last summer. Key and Bell Drummond took their partnership to 40 before the former on 10 made a hash of a pull shot off Shrek to lob a simple catch to Redfern. The bowler gave Key a little smile to send him on his way. 24 runs later and Bell Drummond was also on his way for 24. Rain dragging one back in from wide of the crease to trap the batsman in front. Ben Harmison was also out LBW for 20 as the visitors found scoring runs no easier than their hosts. Kent were now on 66 for 3. Brendan Nash tried to put his side in the box seat once again, but he too was out just after getting off to a decent start. It was that kind of day on that kind of pitch, where a batsman never felt that he was completely in. Nash became the fifth man of the day to fall in the 20s. 
He had a hand in his own downfall though, dragging this ball from Buck back onto his stumps to leave with a total of 94 for four. And to the very next ball, it was 94 for five when Sam Northeast edged Shrek to Smith, who held on really well in the slips. Stevens and Ball then blocked out the final half an hour of a fascinating day on which 15 wickets fell and the game moved on at a pace. Kent will go again on the second morning on 106 for five, which means that they'll start trailing by 111 runs with a real battle on to earn a first innings advantage.